Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Welcome to the letter W in the A to Z of real-time marketing. And this is all about writing personalizations in emails. So we've kind of touched on this quite a few times on other videos where we've needed to do a bit of personalization to kind of um, walk through and talk through how to do something, but we haven't had a uh, video on this specifically. So we're going to talk through adding personalization, how you do it, um, what some of the sort of tips and tricks are. So let's jump in and see how we can do personalization in emails. Okay, so I'm in the emails area for real-time marketing and I'm gonna go ahead and click new and I'm going to pick a template that I've already got. So let's go with this one. Okay, so the only personalization, it's not really personalization, but the only thing that I've got in that specific area under tokens is company address and preference center because they're already in my email. So I'm gonna click on add a subject. So what I want to do is I want it to be so that when the person receives the email that they're going to have their first name in that email when they look at it. So they'll see it in the, in the subject, might make them more interested to go ahead and open it. So what we've got here is our little personalization button. So I'm going to click on that. And when we open up the personalization panel or this little sort of fly out, then what it's going to do is it's going to... Um, allow us to put in a label. Now, you might be tempted to go ahead and type in the labels right away, but what's gonna happen is when I actually pick the data field, it's going to use that as the label. So if I click on select a data field, and then just gonna go ahead and type out first name, and that's the field that I'm gonna pick, first name from the contact. So immediately it pulls that in so I don't have to put in a label. So that's the first thing, you don't have to add a label, it will create one for you. Then I'm going to go ahead and not every time do we want to put in a default value. If you know absolutely that there will always be a value in a field, you don't have to. However, if you don't require first name and there could possibly be contacts without a first name, I'm going to want to put something in there so that if that is empty, it will actually show something. So I'm going to put valued customer and I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now we've got um, first name, um, check out these deals. Okay. Then also in the preview text, maybe I want to add something here. And um, maybe I'm going to put something about the account that the company is linked to. So I might say we think, and then I'm going to do um, personalization. And this time, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the account that the contact is linked to, okay? So I'm going to search for account and what happens is it pulls back and you see this little icon here, that means that that's a lookup field to the account record that the contact's linked to. So when I then click on that, it's then going to allow me access to all of the fields on the con sorry, all of the fields on the account record that that contact is linked to. So then I can get into the account name. If I had just pulled and tried to pull like the company or something like that, it, it might just pull the GUID, but this is actually saying, well, you're trying to get into the account that the contact is linked to, so what do you want to actually display? So I want to do the account name. So again, it's pulled in that as the label, and then the default value, I'm just gonna put your company, so if there is no account that they're linked to, I'm gonna save that. We think your company will love these offers and that's going to be in my preview text and I've also got a little button here where I can put in an emoji if I want to so I might search for a heart so then I can go ahead and put in a heart to that as well so I've got the first name and then I've got the account name that they work for so that's what I've put in and immediately we can see here that these are starting to be added into the tokens area now, here's where we need to be a, a little bit, um, uh, we can do things and they could end up looking messy or we can do things a different way and um, hopefully keep this neat and clean. So, if I want to go ahead and put in another bit of personalization, let's actually just refresh this for a second. Give this a name. Um, save it, refresh, 
<clears throat> now what I have noticed is if you put in the personalization on the subject and then you go into the email that it has so sometimes it doesn't work the first time so I've noticed that if you refresh it then it seems to help so if I go ahead and do personalization and there we've got this right here if I go ahead and I pick um, first name again and I select it, notice that it gives the label first name one. And that's because on the subject, we've already added first name. If I were to put that in and do first name one, then what would happen is in this tokens area, we'd see first name and first name one, which to me is just a little bit messy. So instead, what we can do is I can type in the first name as the label. And because that already exists, it says, oh, well, this is what the default value is that you set up for that specific um, bit of personalization. So the label of first name, it knows it already exists. So I can just go ahead and save that. And then in my tokens area, I've only got first name one time, as opposed to if I put it in multiple times and just allowed it to, um, if I search for it without just putting the label in, then it will just do first name one, first name two, wherever I'm actually using that. Okay. So and a couple of other things that I can do. If I go ahead and I put in um, a button, so let's go ahead and add in a button. Um, so when I'm putting in a button, so let's say... Um, uh, Excuse me. So we've got the URL of button and the idea would be that we would type out or paste in whatever the URL is. However, if we think about um, the letter M where I made an event trigger and able to pass through a link to a survey, that kind of thing, we can also use personalizations to do links as well. So if I click on the personalization button and then when I click on select a data field, I have not only the option of accessing from contacts, but I've also got the event trigger section and the case closed send survey, if I open that, we have a value that we're passing through that we can then use that's going to be a URL to a survey. So I can go ahead and click save. So now this URL is essentially a bit of personalization rather than having to paste in a static URL, it's going to dynamically be set. So that's great, we've set that in there. If I click on personalize, there we've got survey URL. We've got that next bit of personalization added into the token section. So then what I can also do is I can go ahead and let's say that I want to add in a bit more um, text. Um, let's just do a bit of padding. All right, so what I can do here is I could do something like uh, kind regards and my personalization now maybe I want this to go out and I want to actually display some information about the owner of the, the contact maybe that's the account manager so I'm going to go ahead and click on personalize and this time I'm going to type in owning user and there we've got the owning user and that's the lookup to the owning user for the contact so then what I can do is from the owning user, I can display and say, okay, well, I want to put their first name and then maybe their full name and maybe even their email address so I can pass through information from the user record that that contact is tied to. So again, it's just adding to that sort of personalization aspect. So sometimes these take a while to load, as we can see. So I might cut part of this out. <laughs> there we go, it's finally loaded. So I'm gonna do first name, first of all. Now notice that this, because we've already got first name, this is put first name one. So I might put first name user. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. And this time we will make it uh, owning user. It tends to be the first time it needs to load, it takes a long time. Um, and then after that, it seems to be a little bit faster. So then I'm going to do first, uh, sorry, full name user, just so that we can clearly see. And then this time I'm going to go ahead and again, pick owning user and email. And that one will be this one. And again, I'm going to put the word user after it as well. So now if I look at personalization, 
there we can see we've got the first name user, full name user, primary email user. So that's just a few ways in which you can do the personalization. And again, every time you go ahead and add in a new thing that has a different label, it's going to put it in here. So just keep that in mind. If you've already added first name once, you don't need to just keep, keep adding it and have first name one, first name two. Type in the label of first name and that will pull in the one you already added and the default value that you've set up as well. So now if we want to preview and test it, we've also looked at this in another video, we can go ahead and we can add in some information. So we can add in some information and then that is going to show us what our email is going to look like. Okay, so that's how you can go ahead and really truly personalize those emails using some dynamic content, dynamic information. Again, remember about you don't need to keep on adding the, the, um, uh, the labels each time. Use existing ones that you've already added, existing tokens. That's it. So have you started using this? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious. Have you found it simple, easy to use, a bit complicated? Um, let me know what you think. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.